Welcome back to Real Estate 101. Today we're gonna to continue our discussion on mortgage financing and talk a little bit about getting a mortgage for self-employed people. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by Tracy Brock of Dominion Lending Centers. Tracy, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Tracy, so as a business owner, what is the minimum down payment that a lender requires in order to be approved for a mortgage? You can, usually it's 10%. It's based on how they do their income tax, but typically you can still do the 5% down like a standard um, salaried or hourly mm -hmm. employee, but it really does depend on how they claim their income and how much income they claim in their taxes. Most business or self people do have to have 10% down. Okay, so is there a minimum beacon score that lenders are looking for from self-employed or business owners? You no, know, I, I would say that the, the beacon score is just as relevant whether you're a business or self person or you're a salaried or hourly employee. They do want to see that 650 mark. They will go as low as 610, but 650 is a there. Okay. All right. So what about the documents? What kind of documents are lend lenders looking for from, from business people? Business people are actually needing of many more documents than a regular uh, salaried employee person. Uh, T1 generals are extremely important. Business license or articles of incorporation, your notice of assessment, and sometimes even your HST, depending on the type of business that you're in. Those documents are very relevant at the beginning. Okay. So let's say Let's say a couple is buying a home. One of them is self-employed and the other one is a regular employee that is on a yearly salary. How does that work? Well, it depends on how, what the purchase price is and what they need to qualify for. If one individual salaried employee or person is making, let's say, $80,000 a year and the claimed income on the business for self person is $26,000 and it works as far as the numbers, the TDS and the GDS are concerned, then they can put 5% down on that house. If they have to bump up to a stated income, the business for self person, to let's say $50,000 to afford that house that they want to buy, then it's 10% down payment again. Okay, Tracy, so you mentioned stated income. I guess that's what's normally used by the lenders for someone that's self-employed. What exactly is stated income? Stated income is when a borrower uses an amount above what they claim on their income taxes. Typically, businesses will have a gross of income of, let's say, $100,000, and they have certain write-offs that they can use to bring them down to a lesser, lesser tax bracket, then thus paying less income tax. Right. So typically, let's say an income of $32,000 would be their claimed income that they would pay on their line 150 of their income tax. Well, if you're going to purchase a home at $500,000, a claimed income of $32,000 did not make it affordable for you in the eyes of the lender. So what they do in turn is take a reasonable stated income. And reasonable meaning that you have to prove the invoices, you have to show documentation in your bank accounts. Contracts. Contracts to prove that this is a reasonable income that you're stating and say you state your income at $80,000 for example. And it also depends on the industry what the reasonable amount is as well. So right. some industries a reasonable amount for a commission employee might be much less than a reasonable amount for somebody who uh, is a mechanic right. okay. or vice versa. All right, so what about interest rates? Are they different, higher or lower for someone who's self-employed? Typically that's a, a lender uh, preference. Some lenders are they're exactly the same. Sometimes there's a 25%, like a 0.25% uh, premium. There are lenders out there that don't offer any premiums for business or self people though. Okay, Tracy, so let's say that this particular business owner has a partner in their business. How does that, or does that affect the application of getting a mortgage? It typically doesn't affect the application as long as the income is reasonable that he's, again, claiming a stated income. So if he can show that as a business partner, uh, he earns the income that he's stating based on the invoices that business has, then it's of no consequence. All right, and what about insurance? Um, do business owners need separate insurance on the mortgage even if they put down at least 20%? If you're referring to mortgage default insurance with regards to CMHC, Genworth, Canada Guarantees, uh, with the new laws, there actually is, most lenders are charging uh, insurance premium when it's 25% down payment, but a lender has the prerogative to charge insurance premium up to 35% down payment, depending on credit, on risk, those kind of things. So yeah, they will still need insurance up to 25% typically. All right. so. Is the process longer uh, for someone who's applying for a mortgage that is a business owner than, than, than normal? 
I would say no. If you have all your documentation up front, the process is still the same. It would still take, you know, between five and ten days if it was uh, closing quickly. You could still do it within a ten-day period as long as you have your documentation up front. All right. So. Any last tips, Tracy, uh, for anybody watching our show um, that is self-employed or a business owner and, and you know they're thinking of buying a home and need a mortgage? I would say full disclosure to your mortgage broker. The more they know and understand your business, the better they can in turn relay that information to the lender. Uh, have all your documents up front so there is no delays. The longer it takes for you to get your articles of incorporation or copies of your invoices to the broker, to the lender, it's going to delay the whole process. And you know, just be upfront with exactly what it is that you do for a living, and it makes it much easier for the mortgage broker to then relay that information to the lender, and then the lender understands, and the risk is mitigated. So, all right, Tracy, good stuff. Thanks for coming on today's show. You're welcome, Joe. Thanks for having me. If you're self-employed or you're a business owner and you're looking to get a mortgage and need some help, get in contact with Tracy Brock of Dominion Lending Centers. I'm your host, Joe Tracera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.